And then up there is where the cats live. That's the cat's house. There's Gigi. Hi, Gigi. Hi, James. Hi, Bougie. And then there's the living room and the kitchen. And the rest of the house is in there somewhere. But look at this place. It's a hot tub at the end. Sun tanning. There's Gigi. Bougie. And then there's the living room. And so if you remember just a few nights ago at the magic castle i got incredibly sick this is my first time in two days leaving the house and i was only leaving the house because i had invited so many people to the pool party i felt like i had to welcome them all and be there because they didn't necessarily know each other so my goal was to go to the pool party just long enough to say hi, get everyone acquainted, and get back to bed with my bottle of Pepto-Bismol. But that's not exactly what happened. Okay, so I've propped up the broken tripod on a cardboard box. So two legs are as short as possible, and then the broken leg is just kind of flimsy out to the side. I'm just hoping this stays up. <laughs> I'm gonna go online and put some tripods on my Amazon wish list right now. So this is the vlog where I have to be really careful what I say because it could very quickly turn into too much tea. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of tea. It's not like 7-Eleven days where you bring whatever container you want. You can have as much Slurpee as you can hold. This is just a little bit of tea for you guys. So. Um, because at the end of the day, I still respect everybody. Like, everyone's... So, three summers ago, Gigi, Nick, and I were hanging out, and Gigi was like, hey, I know these filmmaker friends. Uh, let's call them Bob and Duck. You know, I know Bob and Duck. And they were at Soho House, we met up with them for lunch. It was incredible. We drank and were merry and it was a great experience. And we're like, hey, we should hang out more while you're in town. Let's go do this, let's go do that. And so this group chat started. And then the more things we decided to do, the more Bob and Doug were like, oh, we should invite so-and-so. And I always told so-and-so about it. They wanna to come too and they wanna to come and they wanna come. And so the group chat was growing and growing and growing and growing. And so this friend group got a nickname and you know we, we were like a club. And I think my, like looking back three summers later, I think my mistake was I treated this club like motorcycle club. Like I was like, oh, someone's doing something and they're support you. Oh, we're a friend group and I'm your friend. I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna do this. And I put a lot of effort into these people that I had just met, but also too, I was new to California, new-ish California and I didn't, have a ton of friends that want to do stuff together on the regular like this group and so I put a lot of um, energy and loyalty into this group and I thought we were friends and I think that was my mistake is I instantly gave them the same kind of friendship that Gigi and I had built over decades the first like year and a half it was solid like we would do these cool events together Gigi would fly into town, we'd do a bunch of extra events while she was here. Um, we were making movies together, people were going to red carpets together, movie premieres and supporting each other's events and, and birthdays and celebrating together. We really felt like we were like a, a team. Like, it was really, really, really awesome for so long. Um, and then, like I said in a few days ago on the vlog, this is kind of the beginning of the end, and this is kind of the beginning of the end, and I don't know if it's still the end or not, but here we are. Um, there was, you know, our, our group got so big, and people came and went, um, and it stopped being about what it was originally about, and it just kind of became like Bob and Doug's drinking buddies. It's kind of how I felt. It, it wasn't about friendship anymore. It was about who's going to meet up with them at the pub on a regular basis. <laughs> and it became, and there's one point where like, 
They didn't even like the pub anymore. They didn't want to go there. They were like, fuck our, we called it like our clubhouse, our hangout. They were like, fuck that place. We're not going back there because this and this happened. And I realized through all these interactions that when somebody in the friend group was like, fuck this, we're not going there. I was like, whoa, we should have a conversation. And when somebody was removed from the group because somebody was bickering and they're like, well, I don't fuck with him anymore. He's out of the group. He's dead to me now. The rest of you can be friends if you want to. We're kind of left in a place where it's like, I feel like I'm betraying my friendship to you if I remain friends with that person, but I also have a friendship with that person. And shit got weird. And I was like, you can't just get a little bit of information, get angry and cut somebody off completely. Like you need to have a conversation. And over the time, like we're talking like we're talking about three summers in a row here. So this is a lot of time. This all built up over time. I was like, you have to talk to people. You can't talk about people. Well, so-and-so did this. Well, did you ask him? Did he, he talked? And there's uh, times I was calling. I'm like, put him back in the group. You guys are best friends. Like, stop it. Like, we're not gonna just kick somebody out of the group because you had a bad day. Like, we were friends, right? Like our friendship means something. Your friendship means something. And that became a problem over time. And so when people got kicked out of the group or when people were upset with each other, they were like, what were they calling me? They were like, Queen Samantha has spoken or Mama Samantha has spoken or something like that. Um, and I was just like, just be good to each other. And I was just, I got to a point where I was at wit's end where I was just like, aren't we friends? Don't friends treat each other better than this? And it was like, I just got to the point where like you can't just cut somebody off because you're in a bad mood because like what like it could be for the dumbest thing like oh buddy cut his steak with his left hand instead of his right hand I don't like him anymore fuck him and he dude could have cut it I mean this is an extreme example right some he could have been like oh well I was just cutting that way because I didn't know any better I can change my way but you've already cut them off you haven't allowed them to change their way and that's what bothers me is when you don't allow correction you don't allow growth you don't allow your friends to fuck up and be better. You just see something you don't like one day and cut them off completely. And like that drove me crazy. And that's why I say like, I treated this friend group like a motorcycle club. Like I gave them like extreme loyalty, dedication, commitment. Like I was there Wednesday night movie premiere, Thursday night movie night, Friday night, like birthday party. I was there. And then I realized that I could step away and step away a little bit more and just do the things that felt important. And <sighs> then this weekend happened and there was a situation at the Juneteenth party that needed to be dealt with immediately. And it wasn't. And instead of talking to the person, we talked about the person. And it became everybody's situation when it should have been between a small group of people and the situation should have been fixed. There should have been apologies, there should have been changed behavior and we all should have been friends and moved forward. And instead, there was a lot of talking behind the scenes about people that to each other and a lot of, well, I think he means this when he says this and she means this when she, like, oh man, it got to be so much. To the point where somebody was like exiled from the group completely. Um, and, it was before the person who removed them and made the announcement had spoken to that person. They were like, well, so-and-so spoke to them. And I heard what they said, heard thir third hand, so therefore it's law. And I was just like, stop it. So at this pool party, keep in mind, I've been sick for two days, right? Like I had barely been able to breathe without exploding. And I'm at the pool party, I'm holding it together. I'm drinking Pedialyte and one of the friends came over to me and was like, hey, what do you think of this situation? I did this, this, and this. And I was like, I think that's bullshit. I think you should talk to people, not about them. I think you should have spoken to that person directly. I don't think that you should have made an action without having the first-hand information. Like, I, I think this is stupid. I think this is unfair. I don't think this is how friends treat each other. And then that person and I, uh, we had already had a lot of tension between us and it blew up. It was the first time since moving to Los Angeles that I just 
lost it. Like I, I yelled and I was, I called them a monster and I was, they were like, oh, I'm done with you. And I was like, you want to be done? We're fucking done then. And I, I lost all sense of decorum. I lost um, all patience. I threw my bikini cover up on, I grabbed my PD light and I walked out the front door and I was like, fuck this. You could welcome them all to the party. I'm out. And I went out the front door and Gigi and Unique came storming after me and they're like, Sam, don't go. And I had people calling me on my phone, like, hey, I'm gonna be there in 10 minutes. And I was like, what do I do? Like stand in the front driveway and like welcome them in, but not go in. Like I've made a scene now, like fuck. And part of what tipped me off or like sent me off is that uh, this person uses always and never statements. And I remember taking mediation training and that's one of the things you do not allow people to do when they're, they're mediating because it creates conflict, it doesn't create solutions. You can't say, you never do this, you always do that. Those kinds of statements are inflammatory and we don't speak that way. This person hasn't had mediation training and they are very uh, comfortable speaking that way. And as soon as they were like, you have never to my face and they're waving their finger at me, I was just like, fuck you, <laughs> I lost it. Um, and there's like, I had to apologize to the homeowner um, and to the party goers for my behavior because I don't, I don't lose it like that. I don't get pushed over the edge and I was pushed over the edge. I cannot remember a time, not definitely not in my time here in California, but I don't remember it. The last time I lost my cool like that in Vancouver would have been like 2015, I can think of a situation where I lost my cool. So from 2015 to 2024, I've been pretty good at keeping myself together and maintaining focus and composure. But I just got like all the way like, boof, booted off the edge. And um, that's my fault. I let myself get to that point. Now, was I sick? Was I not feeling well? Was I barely holding myself together? Yes, there's a bunch of reasons that led to me snapping. Um, but I stand by what I said. I do think when they are, when I was asked, what do you think of this? And I said, I think it's bullshit. I stand by that. I still think it's bullshit. I think that you should have talked to the person before making a decision, making a change, and making a big decree to our friend group. And before saying certain things in a room full of mixed company, um, that you definitely said for um, emphasis to help get your point across that weren't true. Like you just can't, there's some things you just can't say because if it was true, we'd be getting the cops involved. And it wasn't true, you just threw the words out there because you wanted to be right so damn badly. <sighs> that bothered me. So anyways, I, um, and I, I, since this situation, I spoke to that person and I said, you said this, this, this. And I don't think that's true because if it was true, we'd be getting the cops involved. And he was like, oh no, I never said that. I'm like, it's exactly what you said because it's why I was so fired up. How dare you say something like that? And so anyways, um, I'm giving you guys way too much tea right now. But what this comes back to is reflecting on like myself and how um, I treat my friends and what I'm looking for in a friend group. And I think that what I, I mixed up was that this wasn't a friend group. These people were nice to each other. They did things together but they, everyone's very surface level friends. I was, I was down for real friends. I was down for that 20 year camaraderie that, that I have with other people. I was down for that, that ride or die, like loyalty, commitment, I support you, you support me, let's go win in this world kind of friendship. And I thought that's what this group was. And that was probably a little naive of me. This was a social group that wanted to hang out. They wanted to go to the pub and drink. I don't drink, so what was I doing there? One of the biggest problems I have is disposing of people, treating people like they're disposable. And um, I think everybody deserves to grow and to change their behavior and to be better. And when you take that chance away from people, you're treating them like they don't matter, like they can't matter, like they didn't matter. And 
So, like I said, like leading up to this argument, <clears throat> this person I was speaking to, we already had tension because this person loves to play and I take everything very seriously. And at the Juneteenth party, they had called and said, oh, I can't make it, I have to go wash my hair or whatever the excuse was. And I saw the look on Gigi's face and how disappointed she was. And I took the phone and I walked to the, to the driveway to call them and be like, I don't care what you have to do, you're getting your ass here, you're important and you're needed and you're wanted. And as I am like getting this angry speech ready to rip them a new one to get them there, they're walking up the driveway and they're like, oh, I was just kidding, I'm totally coming. And I slugged him in the guts. <laughs> and I was like, you can't fucking play with me like that. Like I get so worked up. Like I wanna do the right thing. I wanna support my friends. When Gigi is hurting, I'm gonna fix it. And I left with all that energy, like, oh, I have to fix this. And then they're like, ha ha ha, just trying to get you. And I'm like, so you're saying shit just to get me riled up? That's not how friends treat each other. Maybe that's funny once. Maybe you can like pull a joke on somebody, but to do it each and every single time you see each other or each and every single time you talk to each other, stop it. Like you're, you're hurting me. You're physically hurting me because my energy gets riled up, my cortisol levels go through the roof and I get into like protective mama bear mode and then you just sit there and go, oh, this man fell for it. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here with people like that? So I asked, this person at the end of the day, I said, hey, I need a break. And I took two weeks out of the group chat and then I went back into the group chat because I thought that maybe I was being overdramatic or maybe I was jumping the gun or whatever. And I was like, you know, one person pissing me off and pushing me over the edge shouldn't be, shouldn't be like how I treat everybody. There's lots of great people in this group that I want to stay in contact with. And, um, it just really made me reflect on like what friendship is, um, what's important in life, who I am, and here we are. You push me over the edge. You can you can push like Bob can push Doug over the edge and say he's dead to me, fuck him, he's horrible, and then two weeks later, oh we're best friends again, everything's fine, everybody, he's back in the group. That might be cool for Bob and Doug's relationship, but that's not how I can communicate with people. I can't do it. Because once you say that I'm dead to you, I'm not gonna come crawling on my hands against your broken glass begging for you to take me back. If you're gonna flip on me that easily, then you're not someone I can trust as a friend. And I keep saying this and I keep, like I, I've, I've reached out on text message two times since that day and the response was, I'm sorry you feel that way. I guess you don't want to be my friend. And I was like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying these are the issues. Like, I'm stressed out. I'm, I'm losing my mind because this is stressing me out. I'm upset. And yeah, that's where we left it. So, <sighs> it was a beautiful day. So, when we talk about like friends, and I, I say like, you know, like I showed up, I went to the birthday parties, I, I went to the pub nights, I went to the movie premieres, I went to the, the movie nights, I went, I went, I went, I went, I went to all the haunted houses and I hate scary movies. <laughs> and I feel like I showed up for my friends. And there's been a couple times where I've been like, hey, I'm hosting at Irwindale Speedway. It's gonna be this crazy show. This, there's models, there's car models, there's hot rods, there's motorcycle stunts. Like it's gonna be a big wild day. Can you guys come? And people are like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then nobody shows up. And the day of the event, I get a bunch of like, oh, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. So the day of this pool party, I was like, hey, the models that are coming today that I've invited are the models for the bikini contest next weekend at the 4th of July party I'm hosting. Can you guys come and su support our girlfriends? And the guys were like, I don't know, it depends if I drink the night before, you know, it's kind of far away. And I was like, I come to everything you ask of me. I ask you once a year to come to an event that I'm hosting that is important to me. And you're like, I don't know, I might drink alcohol the night before. Like alcohol is more important to you than me. And I just like, these aren't my friends. These are friends of convenience. These aren't friends. Do I know what the definition of friend is? Maybe not. Maybe I, I put too much 
in maybe using the word friend is maybe maybe they're just social acquaintances maybe that's it maybe i expected too much but what sucks um and the reason i don't celebrate my birthday is because i can't handle i can understand you saying no to an event that i'm hosting because it's far away i can understand you saying no because you might be drinking the night before because it's an event that you didn't ask for and it's just something I, i'm trying to get support in cool but when it comes to things like my birthday or even my wedding i don't ask people to show up for me because i don't want to wake up that day so hopeful to see them just to get a list of text messages oh i totally can't make it oh i can't find my keys no i'm actually searching for my keys right now mom my knees under my couch i can't even find them like bro i knew you didn't want to be there from the get-go and saying yes or maybe or i'll see what i can do it just left me disappointed so many times i can think of one person in california who will show up when it really matters Everybody else will show up when it's convenient. And you know, it's okay to have just one really good friend. Maybe you're lucky if you can even get that in this life. 